Hello and welcome to the Scatterville channel and today let me show you what are the best PCs you can build that are specifically designed for content creation and multimedia uses. A lot of my content here on the Scatterville channel is definitely geared towards gaming and streaming and you can see that clearly on my website pcbuilds.gg as a lot of my PC builds on here are generic gaming PCs. However, what I've done is that I've added four new multimedia and productivity PCs for those of you who wanna go beyond gaming. I've definitely been reading the comments and I've been seeing you guys wanting some extra use case scenarios for some of my builds, that being they can possibly do 3D modeling, AI, video editing, and other stuff beyond that. So I went ahead and addressed that on my website, pcbuilds.gg, with four new build lists ranging from $1,000 going up to $2,000. And throughout each of these build lists, I'll be going through each of the part selections, why I chose certain parts, why it all works together pretty well. And while you can definitely exchange out certain PC parts for others in each of these build lists, some of these choices I do want you to maintain if you were to actually build one of these PCs yourself through the website. So all of this can be found in the description below through my PCBuilds.gg links. It's pretty easy, can't really miss it. But all in all, the website is pretty fun to play around with if you wanna find what I think are the best PCs at certain price points if you wanted to build something custom. So with all that said, we're gonna get straight into the video, but first I wanna give a quick word to our sponsor, which I think you guys will actually be interested in checking out if you're watching this video. Step up your PC's capacity with a tailored NAS store solution like Ugreen's new DXP4800+. Plus. With a capacity of up to 96 terabytes of storage, the DXP4800 Plus offers all the storage you need for a fast, reliable, yet effective NAS storage solution. Adding and removing drives from the DXP4800 Plus is pretty simple thanks to the included for 5.25 inch drive bays, and even comes with two onboard M.2 SSD slots on the bottom of the unit. Fortunately, you can tap into speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, or even 2.5 gigabits per second on the back of the unit. And all of this is being powered by a 12th generation Intel Pentium Gold processor with eight gigabytes of DDR5 memory that could be expanded up to 64 gigabytes. And whatever you plan to store on this NAS can be easily accessed through Ugreen's Download Center app, whether you want to access it through your phone or even another desktop computer. So if this NAS storage solution from Ugreen interests you, then you can receive up to 35% off the DXP4800 Plus by pledging to their Kickstarter found in the description below from now until May 9th. So first things first, I wanna make a note on streaming cause I feel like a lot of you guys think that you're gonna need one of these specific multimedia and productivity PCs just to stream and that is not the case. You can stream perfectly fine on one of my gaming PC builds. And that's because if you're a gamer and you wanna to output to Twitch, Kick, YouTube, or wherever, you're gonna to wanna to use a hardware codec, which basically means you're gonna to wanna to do your stream encoding through a graphics card. And that is because modern day hardware codecs are very efficient and produce the same quality as a software codec, which would be, for example, X264, that'll be primarily utilized by, say, a CPU, which was definitely viable, like, five years ago, but it's 2024, and modern day NVEC, AMD's codec, Intel's QuickSync codec, and even AV1, which is available on all of most modern day graphics cards, is gonna be way better bang for your buck when it comes to streaming performance than trying to do software encoding through a very expensive eight to 16 core CPU. So although the title of this video is for content creators and multimedia enthusiasts, for streamers, like I said, any of my current gaming PC build guides is gonna be perfectly fine for streaming if you wanted to go down that route. So with that said, I'm literally gonna change this shirt. <laughs> I'll give you one moment. Now, I know what you may be thinking. You may be like, well, why the hell did you even put on a Twitch shirt if you're not even gonna talk about streaming in the first place for any of these PC builds? Well, that is because I gotta hook you in somehow <laughs> into these videos. So actually, if you wanna help out this video's performance, give it a like. Likes help these videos in the algorithm. They make them perform better. At that point, it's up to you guys how successful you want this video to be. So if you feel like you wanna help push the message out in some more content creation and multimedia focused PC builds, then that would be greatly appreciated. All right, so we can go ahead and play with my website to find some of these PC builds. So I'm gonna go ahead and go under tags and I'm gonna go ahead and first thing, 
check off video editing and 3D modeling. And this is going to accrue, yeah, just two of my gaming PC builds, but the rest of these, these other multimedia and productivity PC builds, these are the ones you're gonna wanna look for. And let's start off at a thousand bucks. So yes, I know. I'm going with an Intel CPU in early 2024, but let me give you my reasoning. If you wanna build a $1,000 multimedia and productivity PC, you're gonna to wanna to go with an Intel CPU for nearly all of these build lists, simply because it offers integrated graphics that supports the Intel QuickSync codec, which is the best video codec out there for video editing. Whether you're editing in DaVinci or Premiere Pro, it offers the most in terms of footage compatibility across the board, if you are, say, working with any sort of high-end camera that's going to be utilizing compressed H.264 4K footage at like a color format of, I think, 422 or 420, and QuickSync just has the most universal compatibility. And fortunately, in the case of the i5 12600K, although it is two generations old, it's six performance cores tied in with, I think, four E cores, so it's technically a 10-core CPU, but the price is the most outstanding part of it. I know here it says $185, but if we actually click into what the links, actually no, it is $185. Okay. The non-KF model is the one you want to avoid, which I'll go ahead and quickly show you what that is. You want to avoid the CPUs that have the F next to their name. And that is because the F indicates that there aren't any integrated graphics included in the CPU. And that goes against the purpose of wanting a PC that's a little bit more geared towards video editing, because I want you to have fun with that Intel QuickSync codec. So that's why I went with the 12600K. It's also just a very good CPU for the money. And then let's pair it up with a basic $20 aftermarket CPU cooler that's in white. I mean, you're not really gonna be overclocking this because for the motherboard, I have this specific motherboard from Asus. I have the Asus B760 Plus. This is an ATX motherboard, and there's a specific reason why I want this motherboard. So first and foremost, and this is the biggest part, this motherboard supports Thunderbolt. And I know for some of you video creatives out there, I think there are some Thunderbolt supported drives you guys may be using. And fortunately, this is one of the few entry level Intel motherboards that support Thunderbolt. And that can be found on the rear of the motherboard there below one of the USB 3.0 ports. Also, secondly, this motherboard has three M.2 slots, which is pretty cool for an entry-level B760 motherboard. You have one right here at the very top that can be your boot drive, but below here on the bottom, you have two M.2 SSDs if you at all wanted to maybe set up like a RAID 1 or a RAID 0 M.2 SSD solution on this motherboard if you wanted, I guess, very fast read and write speeds or a backup of all of your data onto another set of an M.2 SSD. So you can do that on this motherboard, I believe, which is quite nice for its price of 140 bucks. And it's DDR5. I just want you guys to all start off on DDR5 RAM if you're gonna be spending this much on a PC for content creation and editing because it's the next generation of DDR memory. Might as well get a head start on just getting it and getting it out of the way. Now for the graphics card, this one I actually had a tough choice picking up for this build specifically because the RTX 4060 is okay. For gaming, it's not necessarily preferred, but when it comes to anything that deals with AI or 3D modeling, you definitely wanna utilize the dedicated CUDA cores for any sort of 3D modeling and the dedicated AI cores in this GPU for say, stable diffusion or anything that could use AI you can do that with the 4060. Now with that said, if you wanted something that's a little bit more video editing centric and you didn't care at all about 3D modeling or AI, then I would actually genuinely take a look at the Intel Arc A770, which comes with double the VRAM of a 4060, but actually performs better than the 4060 when it comes to just straight video editing. And this has actually been tested by Puget Systems. And you can see that that extra VRAM and extra horsepower on the A770 actually does make a difference in programs like DaVinci Resolve and Premiere Pro. But if you wanted to do anything 3D modeling or AI related, you can't really do that on these Intel Arc GPUs. So that's where the 4060 just barely ekes out because it's just slightly more well-rounded. I'm not a fan of the 8GB VRAM buffer though, because that will slightly impede your video editing 
performance, but not by a whole lot. And that's for the rest of the system. It's pretty straightforward. 32 gigabytes of DDR5 memory. That is going to be enough for video editing or any other multimedia uses. Going with 64 gigabytes of RAM, that'll always help, but that is also a lot more. So that's up to you if you want to spend double. But as for the storage, I really had a tough time here because I was like, do I split it up into a 512 gigabyte M.2 SSD and then a one terabyte SSD, or I just put it all in a single two terabyte SSD. And I wanted to do a last minute change here with the build list and just keep it to this. That way you guys can play around with the other M.2 slots on the motherboard if you wanted to have two of the same drives that could be backups or a RAID zero. I'm leaving that up to you. The case choice here is pretty nice though. It's white, it's very much value focused. It's gonna feel slightly high end, but not at the high end price tag of like say a hundred bucks. And that's gonna be with the Montec Air 903. The build quality of their cases have been going up over the years. That's why I'm comfortable recommending them, but also in terms of just cooling performance, you've got so many fans here that are all 140 millimeters. I think with the exception, no, all three of these are 140. Yeah, so you will be at no shortage of airflow in this case case, going to look good. Build quality is going to be just there. It's a really good value case. And then for the power supply, you really don't need to go any crazier than 650 watts unless you wanted a higher end power supply for future builds that could use like a higher end graphics card or higher end CPU that'll draw in more wattage. In that case, you want to go with say 850 watts, but 650 is all you need for this build. You don't need any specific one. But one thing to note is that the motherboard that I chose doesn't come with any built-in Wi-Fi. So you may want a dedicated PCIe Wi-Fi card, which can fit on any slot on the motherboard with the exception of the topmost slot because that's the one where you want to put in the graphics card. But if you wanted a monitor, um, there's definitely some more multimedia focused monitors out there that have better color standards than this one, but this one's okay. It supports a DCI-P3 range of up to 95%, which is pretty decent. If you wanted to go higher than that, say like to 98 or 97, you are gonna have to pay a lot more, but this is okay if you wanted something to start out with. And I do want to quickly segment off into something else. Although I am the author of this build list, it's definitely inspired by the other three here, which I didn't create. These were actually created by one of the other curators on PCBuilds.gg, that being Nemus Dark. He's made quite a few build lists on websites like PC Part Picker for other gamers and content creators, but he actually wanted to kind of join in on this website and produce some of his own build lists. So I've actually collaborated with him on making some of these, which is why you can see detailed write-ups because these are the ones that he actually made. So I do want to give credit where it's due. A lot of these multimedia and productivity PC build lists that you see here are all thanks to Nemus Dark collaborating with me over Discord and us putting these together on the website. So that's really cool to see. Which leads us to the next one, $1,200 multimedia productivity PC. As you can see, it's pretty much bang on the same build list as the last one I just showed you, but with two changes. For the CPU, we're actually gonna step it up to an i5-14500. Now for some reason, I don't know why, but the pricing on the 14500 is abnormally good compared to the rest of the Intel lineup right now. For instance, it's not that much more than an i5-14400, which has less cores and less E cores, although it's only about $10 more expensive. And then if we look at the last generation, i5-13500, which was meant to replace, I think it actually, yeah, cost the same. So the 14500, all things considered, is slightly faster. You really don't need anything more than this because you could just go with a 14600K, but that is going to cost, I think, a fair bit more. And I don't think it's worth it because the 14500 and the 14600K have the same amount of P cores and E cores which is really all you want for a, for a PC like this. That'll be dealing with video editing, 3D modeling, any sort of multimedia work. But just what's cool about it is it's pricing. It's actually kind of good. Once again, this is going to come with integrated graphics so you can utilize the Intel QuickSync codec for the best video editing performance there is. But now the GPU choice. I think you guys knew it was coming and that is where there's a small use case scenario where the RTX 4060 Ti makes sense. So here I've chosen, or I guess this is what me and Nemus have chosen, the 16 gigabyte model of the 4060 Ti currently available. Now we don't want you to get the eight gigabyte model because it's just flat out bad. If anything, you want the model that has more VRAM because even that extra VRAM will be slightly more useful in video editing programs and other modeling work. And also for AI as well, having more VRAM helps out with that. But all in all, it's still not that fantastic of a graphics card. 
But what this GPU does do well is AI in 3D modeling, and that really can't be said for other graphics cards in its price category like those from Radeon, just because they don't feature CUDA cores, and they aren't the best when it comes to, say, doing stable diffusion and other AI-related properties. So that's why we're choosing the GeForce RTX 4060 Ti in this build. But the next build I'm going to showcase features a significantly better NVIDIA graphics card. So although the 4060 Ti is the option in this build, I'd really jump to the next build, please. This graphics card just does not have the best karma around it. Other than that though, everything else in this build list is the exact same. And let me go ahead and show you that next build list. So let's go back to the website, let's go ahead and throw on 3D modeling, video editing into the tags, show me. And there is our $1,500 multimedia and productivity PC, same CPU, but here's that much improved GPU, that being the 4070 Super. And out of the entire RTX 4000 lineup, this one offers the best bang for the buck in terms of hardware, which is weird to say, because when you think of like graphics cards, you'd like to think the best bang for the buck graphics cards are gonna be like cheaper. But in the case of Nvidia, they get like way, way better as you spend more money, which is a little weird, but that's just how it is. But the 4070 Super is a very excellent graphics card, especially in terms of pricing right now, because unlike say the 40 4080 Super or 4090, this one can be found for just at MSRP, which is very neat and does feature adequate hardware for its price, which can't be said for the 4060 Ti, which comes with gimped memory and just a very slow GPU core. So all in all, please, like a 4070 or a 4070 Super are gonna be such an upgrade over the 4060 Ti, but I get it. Like if I needed to create a PC build that stayed true to its price tag, I gotta make certain choices. But this $1,500 build is very much superior over my $1,200 build if you're looking for the best multimedia and productivity PC. Other than that though, we had extra budget and we increased the RAM to 64 gigabytes, which honestly you don't need any more than this, so that is just right. And then it looks like for the storage, we did have enough budget to spread it across two one terabyte M.2 SSDs, which is all right, but if you wanted to squash them together into a single two terabyte drive and do what you wanted with the rest of the M.2 slots on the same motherboard that we've shown so far, that is up to you. But for the case, what I do like is this Sky 2 from Montech. Once again, Montech is doing a great job at producing a case that punches above its class while it doesn't cost in a different price category. So that's very nice to see. And it even includes additional fans in here that aren't crap, they're nice. And I built in this case before, I really enjoyed it. It even comes with a full on fan controller in the back of the case that is already pre-wired with all of these fans, which is so convenient. And it's just one of the best PC cases for the money right now. I really like it. Since we have that 4070 Super though, which is already very efficient, let's just go ahead and bump up the power supply to a 750 watt 80 plus gold. That would just be nice to have. Again, we're gonna need a PCI Wi-Fi card because the motherboard doesn't come with any Wi-Fi. And then for the monitor, I say go ahead and get yourself a 4K monitor if you can stuff it up. This one here from MSI, I think is as good as you can get without very much overspending. That's because it can support up to 97% of the Adobe RGB color space and 98% DCI P3, which is gonna be very excellent for like a majority of you who are watching this video. If you wanted to get closer to say 99% or like 100% Adobe RGB, you're gonna have to spend a lot more. So again, you gotta make your choices here, but I think this is just good enough for a lot of you who are watching this video. But that is the $1,500 build. Let's top things off with my $2,000 multimedia and productivity PC, starting with the CPU choice, the i7-14700K. This is as extreme as you'd wanna go for an Intel Core processor. You do not need a 14900K or a 13900K for video editing or any sort of rendering or processing. That's just super overkill. What makes the 14700K though really great is that over its previous 13700 k the 14700k comes with four more e cores and currently the price of the 14700k is not bad it's right at 400 bucks i believe that is pretty outstanding i think so it makes a lot of sense to get a 14700k which once again comes with integrated intel graphics which is going to be useful to take advantage of the intel quick sync codec if you plan to do any sort of video editing but then for the gpu pick up yourself a 4070 ti super which unlike other graphics cards seen from nvidia in this upper price 
category. Fortunately, okay, this one is out of stock from Best Buy. Let's go ahead and check out another retailer here <laughs> from my website. Okay, well this one's in stock, but it's 922 bucks, so there we go. Okay, again, one of the cool things about PCBuilds.gg is that you have access to different vendors. So if one's out of stock on one vendor, you can just go to the other website and check it out there, which is, again, the 4070 Ti Super. I think this graphics card is fairly underrated because the original 4070 Ti was, objectively speaking, not bad. It just really needed more VRAM to justify its price. And fortunately, all the 4070 Ti Super really needed to do is provide more VRAM for that. And it did that along with a few more enhancements. And honestly, I don't know if you need to go any crazier than this for video editing, 3D modeling, or anything AI related. Okay, maybe AI, you do want a top of the line 4080 Super or 4090, because a lot of people are specifically buying those graphics cards for those use case scenarios. But for creative work, I don't see you needing to go any crazier than this. The 4070 Ti Super should be all you need, really. And you can pick it up for MSRP, right at 800 bucks which can't be said for the 4080 Super and 4090. And I don't know if spending that extra 400 or 800 bucks to a 4090 is really gonna be that noticeable for basic video editing and 3D rendering. For AI, it might make a difference, like I said earlier, but I just think it's not worth it. The 4070 Ti Super is here, it's chilling at a good price for those use case scenarios. Then for the motherboard, it looks like we upgraded to a Z790 board, which although this one doesn't come with built-in Thunderbolt on the back here, what it does have is four M.2 SSD slots. So that gives you plenty of options to work around with if you wanted to play with like different rate setups with your M.2 SSDs. Maybe there is a Z790 motherboard out there that supports Thunderbolt. If those of you guys who want it really, really want it, I guess let me know in the comments if you want to see that. Otherwise, this motherboard will do just fine. Then the RAM is the same. Storage, we've gone ahead and switched it between a one terabyte and a two terabyte drive. One terabyte for the boot drive, two terabyte for your scratch drive for all video files and other renders. Then for the case, looks like we've got a deep cool case here, the CH560. It is the most expensive, although with a $20 off coupon, it's 90 bucks, which is pretty nice. This comes with three included ARGB fans. Here at the front, they're 140 millimeters and at the rear it's a 120, not bad. And I mean, in these kind of cases, you just need a case that has good airflow. That's really all you need. You don't need anything fancier than that. And then power supply, 850 watt, 80 plus gold, pretty self-explanatory. And then the same monitor. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with all these multimedia and productivity PCs. So once again, I wanna give a shout out to my boy, Nima Stark for helping me create a lot of these build lists with him to publish onto the website. So huge shout out to him. And if you wanna see more of these helpful PC guide videos, then give this video a like, because again, that helps out its video performance. And if you enjoy this kind of informative yet entertaining content on PCs and the current market, press that subscribe button. It's worth it. So with all of that said, thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatterable channel, signing out.